Hello friends, hello neighbors, welcome back. JT here, welcome to my channel. If you haven't been to my channel yet, I am saying welcome and welcome to the family. I'd like to say uh, thank you very much for all the viewers that tuned into my last video. My first off the tabletop review of the Canic Rival, which I did with my 11 year old son out there on the range. And we had a good time just uh, throwing some rounds down range and do me a favor go check that out make some comments on it and i would love to hear your feedback on my first ever off the tabletop review where i show my ugly mugs well anyway i'm doing an unboxing i have not done an unboxing in a very long time and i don't want to i don't want to get rusty so i figure i would check this out got this from blade hq and i haven't bought a well, i almost use the word high-end knife but i'm going to say somewhere in the in the mid-range of a high-end knife in a long time just because you know times are tough a little bit and it's just you know not everyone can afford to lay down a bunch of money on on knives anymore um it's just uh you know with gas getting out of out of out of hand and gas prices food prices i mean the other day i went to buy a, a, a cup of regular coffee it was five five fifty i mean it's just it's just getting insane out there so people's got to save their money and i think the company that I am about to talk about, and I'm sure you already saw it from the title of the video, Microtech is understanding that, and they are saying, let's make some budget-friendlier knives that don't break the bank, and this is going to be in that category. So, without further ado, let's check this out. What am I going to use to open this sucker? How about, uh, you know, I've never done a review on this one. It's 8015 Light by cold steel i've never even carried this before but uh, let's check this out and of course i'm sure you all know it is a microtech oh my notes are flying all over the place over here hey go over here let's check it out this is a true unboxing i have to do this when you look at the camera and looking at uh you know, one thing also, Blade HQ, you guys are getting stingy with uh, with your, uh, what do you call it, with your swag. I haven't had a lot of swag in a while. Get out of here with this. I got a sticker. All right, come on, man. They used to give me swag all the time. And lots of peanuts. All right, so what do we have here? Oh, my goodness. Um, like, I, man, I haven't done, an, I haven't purchased a Microtech in a very long time. And the wife is pretty happy about that. So I wanted to check this knife out just because it's all the rage now. Um, it's a folder by Microtech. It's called the Amphibian. It's a uh, G10 handle. And, you know, I just, I, I like their folders. I'm going to open up some um, other folders in, in, a, in a minute here. But I really like their folder line. It's just... It's user friendly and it's 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 not a safe queen kind of knife. It's a user type of knife. Let's let's dive into this. Let's see if I can make this a little closer here and get right into it. You, know, you like my stickers? You like that? Check it out. Let me just put these suckers aside a little bit. And they change your packaging. That's interesting. Interesting. All right, cool. Well, here it is. This is the Microtech amphibian and uh, in case you didn't know what amphibian means it means usable or can live on sea or water something an animal that's an amphibian can live on sea or water or hang out on sea or water something that's amphibious can work on sea or water but man let, let's let's check this sucker out i am really digging this so what we have here is the microtech amphibian we're coming at about 9.26 inches with a 3.86 inch blade. We're going to talk about how this is actually not a true 3.86 inch blade in a minute. And you've got about a four millimeter of thickness here. If my camera can get to focus, it's not a chunker. Now, let me show you something here. I've got my, you know, this guy, right? My SOCOM Elite. And look at the difference here. Um... Come on, focus, baby. Da, 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 da. Come on, there we go. Look at the difference. It's um, it's a micro, mic, the so common lead on a diet, big time. Um, is that good or bad? I don't know. I kind of like the thickness of my so common lead, but um, yeah. Let's just keep this here, and for comparison's sake, 
let's put that right there. So you've got only about four millimeter of thickness here on the edge. I chose the apocalyptic blade. This only comes in a recurve. And the um, from what Microtech has explained to me, their apocalyptic blade is basically just a very aggressive type of a stone wash. And look at that, man. I mean, I mean, I'm really digging that. Just the way that it makes the it makes the the tone of the blade is really really nice. I'm really digging that. Very very little markings on this. So normally you have your markings of the steel type on the blade i don't see anything on that you got your microtech uh billboard right there which is which is okay i don't have a problem with that um you've got your stamp here with your amphibian and it was made in february of 2024 i'm digging that pocket clip let me tell you that pocket clip that's cool i love that type of rigidity it's it is titanium and yes it is reversible it is tip up carry only. So if that's your flavor of the day, then that's what you get. What else? Let's talk about this. We've got a thumb stud here with ball bearing pivot. Um, I'm glad that they chose the ball bearings. I think it makes a excellent choice for this type of a knife. The thumb stud is very accessible and functional. And I like the way that they use the ram lock here as a gripping point which is which is pretty cool it's it's very fidgety reminds me of a bench made with the access lock but instead of uh you know you've you've got a lever here instead of a ball but it's very fidgety which is which is good because i like i like to fidget with my knives let's keep this open here i don't want to cut myself in front of everyone let's do that right there does that work for this angle i don't know probably not let's just leave it there like that Okay, cool. What else can we talk about this knife? So your ram lock, this that's the type of lock that they're, they're using with this knife here. It's Microtech's take on the crossbar lock system, basically. And what they did is they did away with the Omega spring and replaced it with a coil spring similar to Spider Co's ball bearing lock. They modified the bar into a larger sliding piece um, with the X button as the grip pads which i think is awesome the system is visible from the spine and if you look right there there you go that's your yep and there's your spring right there so it's pretty cool i mean is this a pro or a con should they have closed that in there so that you don't get any debris or anything in there i don't know but i, I kind of like the way that uh you know it's kind of like a 1950s motorcycle you see all the workings and the internals and all the gadgets that move. Um, let's see if we can actuate that. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. You can even see the spring right there from the outside of the knife, which is pretty cool. But again, has anyone had any problems with actuating that thumb safety with any debris or anything like that? That'd be a good topic. So um, the MSI, which I am going to show you in a couple seconds, was the first knife to use this type of a locking mechanism, and it's been a it's been a, a, a very positive uh, welcoming to the to the knife community. The steel. Let's talk about that for a second. It's M three ninety M K. What the heck is that? It's basically Microtech's own tweaked version of M three ninety Bowler steel, and um, they're being kind of secretive about it kind of looking up to see exactly what the metallurgy of of m390 mk is and all i can gather is again they're being kind of secretive as far as the formula is it's got a little bit more uh, carbon in it than the typical m390 and their reasoning for that and this is coming straight from microtech is that it creates a little bit better hardness however it takes away from the um corrosion resistance of the knife if that's important to you if you're going to use this out in the ocean or something like that then i would rethink this type of steel um, but for everyday carry you know unless you're running around doing marathons with with your with your knife and getting salt all over it and sweat all over it shouldn't be a problem but anyway you should always be taking care of your stuff and doing a little lubrication on that at least once a month so you can maintain your knives so that's about all i know as far as the steel and um, as far as the handle, handle, you got about about 5.35 inches here. 
and the G10 handle has some scalloped access right there to the thumb stud. It's very, it's very subtle, but I like the way that you can just get your thumb in there and then access the thumb stud. It kind of reminds me of this. I like the way that Colt did this also, so you can reach your magazine release button. So it's kind of like the same principle as far as uh, having some access to that thumb stud. Do you like this? Might even do a review on it. This is my Colt uh, competition. I don't really like this gun. That thing shoots like it's on a It's a nine millimeter too. Anyway, I don't want to get distracted. So again, this is tip up carry and they advertise this to be at 5.9 ounces. I do have my scale here. Hopefully it will work for me. In one of my videos, it didn't want to work for me, but uh, I did check it today and it did work. Let's see if it's gonna work for me. Come on, baby, here we go. So we've got 5.9 ounces on the dot. Let's compare this to my SOCOM Elite, 5.9 ounces. 5.1 ounces? Seriously? It's lighter. My SOCOM Elite is lighter. So this is a chunker of a knife, man. Let's check that again. 5.9 ounces. Let's just be out of, out of curiosity. Let's see what this 8015 light comes in at. <laughs> it is not light. That's a that's a chunker right there. 6.2 ounces. So if you know what it's like to carry this in your pocket, then you're kind of going to get the same feeling there with your amphibian because, yeah, man, almost 6 ounces. That's a, that's a chunker of a knife. So if you like to have that... That weighted down feeling in your pocket, which, you know what, it's, let's leave this here just for, for the heck of it. I have, and, and please make comments on the video if you've ever done that. I've left knives in the washing machine in, in my pants before and they've gone through the washer. And that was typically with knives like the Benchmade, um, oh, oh my goodness, I always forget the name of it. Uh, the bench made, um, that backpack knife, the people that, uh, carry those knives that drive Priuses. Um, I forgot the name of it. Anyway, it's a skinny knife that doesn't weigh hardly anything. And I forget that those knives are there. So, I don't know. I kind of like a knife that feels like it's a, it's a knife in your pocket. And you, you know, when you, if you take your pants off and it drops the floor, drops on the floor, you're going to hear that knife. So I kind of like that. I've been staying away from those light knives, and you know, I, I dig a heavier knife. As far as taking up retail in your pocket, yeah, this is this is gonna this is gonna be this is gonna take up a good chunk of your pocket. But I kind of dig it. So let's talk about this blade for a second here. What we have here is a recurve blade, and I really like the way that they kept the theme of the handle with the recurve. Oh, holy! of the blade man this thing is sharp um just because i think it it's it's very ergonomic and it and it fits the hand very well and it's it's made kind of for like a chopping and slicing type action it reminds me of those knives that they use in the uh those cutting competitions but it's got that you know i don't know that uh, filipino kind of buoy ish type knife recurve feeling to it that's what it's like. So let's talk about the pros and cons of a recurve blade. The pros. I think there's more pros than cons, actually, if you ask me. It puts the edge of... It puts your edge in multiple spots. So instead of just having one edge, like here, you have one edge here, and then it just rounds off here. You've got one edge here, and then you've got a curve here that allows you to pull through your cuts. And when I say pull through your cuts, it basically, instead of you making that force to push down, if you ever had a, a piece of rope here and you pull on it and it cuts it, basically you're gonna have to do all that force as opposed to a recurve blade where it's gonna catch on the skinny part of that recurve and the recurve is gonna do a lot of that motion. So if you, if you can understand a cutting motion with rope, or a slashing motion 
that's where you get the benefit of a recurve blade. Um, so, you know, basically cutting meat, uh, slashing in a, in, a, in a chopping style, that's where you're going to get the benefit of a recurve blade. Also, one thing that I didn't know until I looked into it is you get from here to here. Remember, we, we have, um, what was it, 3.86 inches. With a recurve blade, you're actually getting a longer blade because you're getting obviously more of a curve in that blade, just like a curvy road. And they say it's a mile down the road, but if it's got 30 turns in it, then you're really going about a mile and a half. So basically the same uh, characteristics pertain to a recurve blade, which I think, you know, I never thought of it that way, but yeah, you get, you get more blade for your money, which I think is pretty cool. Um, now the cons, obviously sharpening. If you are just basically a stone type of sharpener, um, then it's not going to work for you. And what is the best type of sharpening system to use for this? And I've brought it just to be transparent is one of these. And yes, don't laugh, but uh, let me, you can tell by the way that I beat this thing up. It's some, a Victoria Knox. Um, let me get this right. There you go. It's basically just a, a porcelain sharpener. And I'm not going to sharpen this one right here because it's basically just literally just got it. But you can go on the portion of your of your curve. And, you know, it, it takes some practice to learn how to use one of these. But this is what I use and I do a pretty good job. Um, so something like this is what you're going to have to do. Or if you want to be lazy or if you want to be just be on the convenience side, ship it back to Microtech. They'll give you the spa treatment. I think I paid maybe 20 bucks for where is it this knife i sent it one time to microtech just because it, it was getting loose and no matter how much i tightened that pivot screw it wouldn't tighten correctly and um you know i included money for the spa treatment but since it was a warranty issue according to them they um they sent me my money back which is pretty cool and i've i've beat the living crap out of this knife let me tell you i've had this knife for about four years now and I, this is my, this is my carry on the farm knife and I use this for everything. And the same principles with your recurve blade you have here with your teeth on your serrations because you're, you're getting a lot more blade for your money with these serrations. And uh, obviously this is for jagged type cutting. And let me tell you, rope is the best way to cut. With, if you're going to do a lot of rope cutting, serrations are the way to go. So how did this add up? In terms of your size, what else do I have here for you? So a Microtech fan, I've got here UTX85. That's what your size comparison is going to be like. And let's leave this here. And we've got a Benchmade Griptilian. Let's put this right there. How about we flip this side so we can look at that beautiful pocket clip. Um, so that's a full-size Griptilian, not the mini grip. And so that's basically how it adds up. Do I have any spider codes? Yeah, I do. Hold on. I'll be right back. Hey, you take a look at that. And we have here a para two. Let's take a look at how that adds up. So, man, it even dwarfs the paramilitary spider co two. <laughs> it makes it look small. So you've got you've got a hell of a knife here, man. Let me tell you. Should I leave the bench made here? Yeah, let's look at the bench. Um, what else can I say about this? But listen, this, this, this knife right here and the price point, um, I don't know what the retail is, but right now Blade HQ has it for about three and I think you're getting great value. I think there's, there's, they're increasing their value of their knives, which is, which is great. I mean, if you compare this knife here. For about the same size utx 85 look at look at how much more knife you're getting when um when you go this route a folding knife route and like i said i was going to show you guys the msi which actually was the first knife to be introduced by microtech with their ramlock system let's see let's let's open this thing you guys got a two and one today so here we go and I have not, I did open it. This is not a true unboxing, but I did open this knife. I haven't carried it though. 
Here is your, let's be right here, your MSI T-Grip with polymer handles and in the OD green. One thing I don't like about this is that the thumb, the way to open it isn't as positive as it is with the amphibian and the this hole here they try to replicate the uh you know the spider code type theory or philosophy here with how to open but it just doesn't work as well let's get where's it where's that spider code too many knives too little time um see that with the spider co that just flicks open that just it was they've they've dominated that field and they've they've perfected that um but with the microtech msi I don't know. It, it it doesn't. I can't get that to. This is the way I would open this knife. I would just get the ram lock, and that's how I'd open it. Um, the thumb hole just doesn't work for me for some reason. I don't know. If maybe it just. I, I like a positive ka chunk when I open my knife, and that's what you get when you use this ram lock. But I can't. Uh, I haven't perfected that yet. Maybe I just need to work on that and. Drive my wife crazy opening and closing the knife in about 3,000 times. So let's put these two here. Um, again, the amphibian just dwarfs that sucker big time. You want to measure it? You want to weigh it? Let's weigh it. All right, let me get my scale here. Move these guys out of the way. You can zero any time now. I would appreciate that. Thank you very much. And the MSI is at... 4.6 ounces digging the blade though and again you have this you have a slight curve on here with a little bit of a belly which i dig and again they're using their their m390 mk bowler steel um and you know what that's that's really odd that they didn't put any steel markings on this blade did they oh here it is it's right there oh you silly putty tat it's right there there come on focus focus baby yeah iphone 14 is right there so yeah that's basically the microtech amphibian let's leave my patches here as i exit what else i got here thanks thank you blade hq for the sticker and give me some swag blade hq give me some swag and didn't I have another sticker floating around here? Where'd it go? Too much stuff here. Anyway, that's what we got here. Listen, guys, I really appreciate you guys tuning in. Again, tune into my other videos. And if you haven't done it yet, please hit like and subscribe to my videos. I'm almost at 500 subscribers, which I really appreciate. Um, you know, basically everything that I buy here, no one gives me anything. Uh, if you want to send me some, something, hit me up on my Instagram, my IG, as the kids call it, and we can work something out. But I, I've been sent something, I think one time since I've had this channel and it was from Knives Ship 3 and I blasted it all over my, my channel. So if you send me something, I promise I will give you a shout out. Actually, no handkerchiefs, those handkerchiefs that guy sent me. Yeah, cool. But, um, anyway, that does it for me. I appreciate you guys tuning in, digging the knife. Ah, uh, you know what? get a nine out of ten for me Ooh, i'm gonna cut myself for this knife and uh, the only negative thing i can say about this knife is um uh, really at this point the thumb stud is a little quirky i think they could have done a little bit more of a scalloping there so i can hit that more positively but i do i do dig it and the uh the g10 here is phenomenal love the pocket clip um, but yeah, that's the only thing I would say. 9.5. Yeah, 9.5, man. I'm digging this knife. Anyway, thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate you. Like, subscribe, and keep the shiny side up for you guys that ride motorcycles. See ya. Bye.